today we are looking at inverse of a function now we have two main ways under which we can find inverse of a function the first one as we see is by using a flow diagram and another one is by using normal algebra approach now let's look at flow diagram what does flow diagram mean this diagram explains the formation of the function starting from the position of our x let's look at example function f of x is equal to 2x plus 1 now flow diagram will tell us the existence of this function starting from x now if you check properly x is being multiplied by 2 after which we are adding 1 so a flow diagram explains that statement starting from x next is multiplying by 2 we get 2x as shown here then we add 1 here and we get 2x plus 1 now this flow which is indicated here is what we call a flow diagram let's look at another example function g of x is equal to open bracket 3x plus 7 close bracket square now starting from x you will see that x has been multiplied by 3 after which it has been added by 7 then everything is squared now how can we write this on the flow starting from x first this x is multiplied by 3 as shown here we get 3x then after having 3x we add 7 we shown here add 7 we get 3x plus 7 after which you can see everything is being squared so we shall say square so we shall square the whole of the previous hence this will be a flow diagram let's see another example of what we mean by a flow diagram function h of x is equal to square root x minus 1 over 3 you have to note that all this is inside the square root therefore if i am starting from x my first action is i will subtract one after subtracting one then i will divide by three then after doing so my final action will be the square root so how will i present this on the flow diagram starting from x the first action is subtract one that's what you see there we get x minus one the second action will be divide by three we get x minus one divide by three finally we have the square root so on our flow we shall indicate square root and we state the function this is how we get a flow diagram but our main interest is how do we use this flow diagram to find inverse now let's see how we use this flow diagram to find inverse number one inverse using flow diagram we have to know that the symbol for inverse is a power negative one so if i write function f power negative one of x i mean i'm talking about inverse of a function the same if i have function g power negative one it means i am talking about 
inverse of a function. Now, how exactly shall we find the inverse using the flow diagram? First of all, you have to draw your flow diagram as normal. After drawing it as normal, we have to remember that inverse means the opposite action. Inverse means the opposite action. So, what do I mean? If I am going this way on my flow diagram, in inverse, I will have to go that way. Meaning what? If this is my first action, and if this is my last action, when finding inverse, this last action will be our first action, and this first action will be our last action. And also, all the, the actions done when drawing the flow diagram, when finding inverse, we shall do their opposite. For example, this is subtraction, division, and square root. When finding inverse, we shall start by the square root and we shall say square because the opposite of square root is square. The next action on the flow diagram is negative is divide by three. On our inverse, we shall say multiply by three. And the final part, which was initially the first part, that is subtract one. On our inverse, we shall say add one. So you can see what we did on the flow diagram, we shall be doing the opposite when cutting out inverse. We started here, we ended here. On inverse, we shall start this way, we shall end this way. This is the last action, will be the first action on its opposite. This will be the next action on its opposite. And this first one now will be the last one on its opposite. Now let's see example of how to find inverse using flow diagram. We saw before 2x plus 1. That is, when you have x, you multiply by 2 to get 2x. Then you add 1 to get 2x plus 1. That was our flow diagram. Now we want to get the inverse. My starting x was this side. For inverse, my starting x will be at the end. Then I'll be going that direction. So, the last activity was add one. That will be now my first activity on its opposite. I will subtract one. Therefore, since I have my x, and if I subtract one, I will get x minus one. Then my next activity is divide it, uh, multiply by two. So now I will divide by two. So x minus one now will be x minus 1 divided by 2. And since there is no any other action, means this is my final answer. I will come and I say, inverse of my x will be x minus 1 over 2. Let's look at another example. We saw before, 3x plus 7, power 2. And we saw the uh, flow diagram, x, then multiply by 3, we get 3x. Then add 7, we get 3x plus 7. Then all of it is square, so we say square all of it. Now, remember, that was the flow diagram going that direction. To find the inverse, I have to go the opposite of the first movement. Remember, the last action was square. Now, I will do square root. So my x, I will square root, and I get square root of x. Add 7, I will subtract 7, so it will be square square root of x minus 7 multiply by 3 it will be now divide by 3 i get square root of x minus 7 all of it divide by 3 hence my inverse will be square root of x alone minus 7 as you can see here and find over 3. this is how we use flow diagram to find inverse now 
let's see the second part finding inverse using algebraic approach inverse using algebraic approach <clears throat> when you are talking about algebra is the normal applications plus minus multiplication division square and square root now in this case we have steps to follow when you have your function the first thing you have to do exchange the function with y because we know every function is equal to y so we are removing if it was fx we are removing fx and we are keeping y the second step interchange the positions of x and y this means where there is y keep x and where there is x keep y now finally you have to make y the subject to make y the subject is to make y remain alone on one side of the equal sign this means on the side of y if we have more than one activity or one application we have to shift them to the other side where there is x let's see the first example example one i have fx is equal to 2x plus 1. Step 1, remove fx, keep y. Step 2, exchange x and y. On the place of y, keep x. On the place of x, keep y. Hence, we shall get this statement. Now, you can see on the side of y, we have 2x, I'm sorry, 2y plus 1. S remove 1, take the other side. Since 1 is positive, it will become minus. Now I'm left with 2y. To remove 2, because they're multiplying, I will have to divide both sides. And hence, I'll have y alone. And finally, my inverse will be x minus 1 over 2. Let's look at the second example. I have gx is equal to this. First step, remove gx, keep y. Second step, exchange the position of x and y so here keep x there keep y thirdly make y remain alone now if you check properly i have to remove the square first because nothing inside can move until the square is out hence to remove the square i have to square root both sides hence i get square root of x then next i have to take seven it will become minus 7. And finally, I have to divide by 3 both sides. And I get my inverse of g as square root of x minus 7 over 3. Final example. We have function h of x is equal to everything inside the square root. But what is our first step? Remove hx keep y the next step exchange x and y where there is y keep x where there is x keep y now after doing so your last fact is to transfer all items to the side of x but since everything is covered by the square root i will have to square both sides first then this side i will get x squared then this side now I will have to take 3 because if you check closely 3 is the most far away from y because these are together up this is down so i'll cross multiply 3 will come this side then now the minus 1 will shift to the other side and it will become plus 1 finally y is alone so the inverse of h will be 3 x square plus one now we have seen inverse of a function using two different approaches flow diagram and the normal algebraic approach we saw what the flow diagram means that is the arrangement of how the function was done then after we saw the inverse by doing the opposite action from the flow diagram and finally we 
found inverse using algebraic approach by following the three important steps to the answer. Hope you have enjoyed the discussion. My name is Mr. Ishengoma. If you have enjoyed it, you may like my channel and also subscribe to my channel for more videos that I will be putting. Thank you for watching.